area and perimeter are two very different things. It's possible to create shapes that have the same area, but vastly different perimeters. Come on in and make some of these shapes with us. You might be surprised when you see the differences that are possible. Today, we're going to be exploring area <coughs> versus perimeter. And we're not going to use just any old little rectangles. We're going to create really neat, funky shapes like these. But before we can create the shape, we have to make a nice big grid. So please take the paper that I've given you and the ruler. And I'd like you to please go to the left-hand side of the paper and align the ruler with the left edge of the paper vertically. And then draw a line. That will, that will give you a bar that's exactly as wide as the ruler is wide. Then you slide it over and you go ahead and draw another line and so on and so on the whole way across the sheet. Now we're going to go ahead and take our ruler and put it at the very, very top edge and we'll do the horizontal lines on the grid the whole way down to the bottom. Stop. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is create a figure that has exactly 24 square units as its area. But I want all of the figures to be wildly different, like mine over here, okay? No two should be exactly alike. There are a couple different ways of doing this. You can do the straight block effect, you know, where you just go like this and you count how many blocks. But you can get a little bit funkier, too, if you use half blocks. For example, if I come up here like that, and then straight down, I've created a spike. If I create another spike, those two spikes together would be equal to one square block, right? Okay. I could also come down here like this and do a half a block that way, and then another half a block that way, and then these two half blocks together would be a whole block. All right, so it's possible to create some, some rather funky figures. So your goal for the next few moments here is to go over to your grid, take your pencil, and design the coolest 24 square unit figure that you can. All right? The only thing I want to warn you of is this. The figure has to have a continuous perimeter. It has to look like this. It cannot have any Thing on the inside of it, okay? No holes on the inside. It has, just has to have a continuous perimeter along the outside. Okay, let's go ahead and do some. Remember, perimeter is the distance around a shape. Our shape is made up of one unit segments and several diagonal segments. Small problem, and that is these little diagonals. Now let me blow this up so the people out there in internet land can understand what I'm talking about. Let's say this is one unit, and this is one unit. This diagonal segment is longer than either of the two sides. In fact, 
there's a famous theorem called the Pythagorean theorem that tells us this length is exactly equal to the square root of 2. Let's go ahead and start finding this perimeter now. Since those square roots of 2 are going to be real important, let's go ahead and literally write them on the figure. Every place you see a diagonal, please write the square root of 2. On my picture, I have 12 square roots of 2. All right, I want you guys to go ahead and please do that on yours as well. For the distance from here to here was 1, and then there's another one, so I'm at 2, and then 3, and then 4, and then 5, and then down here was 6, and then this be a seven, eight. You're just counting your way around the figure. And just skip over the square roots of two, because we will put those in at the end. Three, four. Okay, I have a total of 24 straight ones. And I've got to add that to my 12 square roots of two. And I'm going to do that then on my calculator. And that will be my total perimeter. My calculator is going to give me an answer of approximately 40.9 when rounded to the nearest tenth.